Welcome to PLM in 10. In this episode, we're going to take a look at packaging specifications in SAP. We're accessing our SAP PLM environment. Uh, it's Enhancement Pack 6, and we're using Google Chrome browser. And you'll notice that our demo system has everything in the kitchen sink available to the user. In an actual imp implementation, however, the main and secondary navigation would be streamlined to the business role. Uh, which in this case we'd be talking about a packaging engineer, so the UI would appear more streamlined to the user. In the work overview page, you'll see the packaging engineer would have access to workflow items, uh, preference settings such as uh, the work environment. This allows the user to create default values and uh, to streamline data entry, uh, but most importantly is uh, search functionality. Because PLM in general is data intensive, uh, robust search is critical. Uh, and SAP strikes a balance here between usability and, and power usability. Uh, the advanced search gives users of the spec database the functionality that they've kind of expected from SAP in the SAP GUI. Uh, it includes object-specific searching, and then you can couple that with like full-text searching and, and even options to do a, a fuzzy search. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just use the Google-like search uh, on all objects and see what the system pulls up for a palette. So you can see that the query searched across all PLM objects uh, and their icons that can be turned on to help user recognition of object types, uh, where the result is a material, document, specification, uh, recipe. Uh, if there's an associated image with the object, uh, you can see the respective thumbnail. Or you can turn on display preview for more details on the object when you select it. Again, this is an example of what some call the uh, consumerization of the enterprise, uh, giving business users the feel and functionality they come to expect from their day-to-day -day personal interaction with the web and related technologies, bringing that to SAP. What I'm going to do now is narrow my search to specifications only, using a description for an insecticide I know is currently in our system. So this will just pull up only spec types in the system. So you can see that the found set returned just specs. You can see we have different uh, packaging types in our system, assemblies, bags, generic film, can, pallets, finished assemblies. These spec types and associated data structures, uh, they're all configurable. The spec database is very flexible, uh, which is why it's such a powerful tool for companies. So I selected a finished assembly and we'll show how all the component specs come together here. Again, we're just looking at the HS Fogger uh, and the basic data. So you get the header validity, basic admin data, and access control, which has to do with um, collaboration and access to the specification. I want to point out in identifiers here, you can add any number of identifiers to the specification. Uh, this will increase its vis visibility when you're searching the object and looking for it, if it's known by uh, multiple names within, within your system. Status will look at workflow. Uh, and here's an important piece is material assignment. So your specification has a direct link to the saleable material um, in ERP system. And then relationships. This is an important aspect of the spec database where you can reuse data. So you'll see here that we have a palette uh, pattern that we're inheriting into this specification. So this can be reused in any number of spec assemblies or uh, finished assemblies. And when we move over to properties, here's what we're looking at now is a property tree in the specification database. Again, you can configure as many because SAP handles more than just packaging specs, you can have any number of uh, property trees. So when we select our finished good assembly, you'll see the green checks where it shows that we have data associated with this specification. And here you can see all the component specs that make up the HS Fogger. Uh, we have the, the bag specification, the film, the corner board, all these components roll up together to make the final assembly. And you can see some of the uh, data and values associated with the components. So again, this spec type, this finished assembly, um, includes admin data, 
technical packaging section, all configured based on the spec type. Nothing comes out of the box with the system. Um, although at Lynx AS as a company has standard spec types that you can use. So you can see on technical packaging, you have your general data on the branding, manufacturing plant, country of origin, manufacturing codes, distribution item. So these are all on the component finished spec level. And going back to that inherited data, you'll see here that this icon shows that we've inherited that pallet data. Again, so that pallet may be used in uh, 5, 10, 15, 20 other products. So if there's ever a change made to it, again, you can propagate that up. It's reusable structured data, which is very important. And here are documents that are associated um, with this uh, finished assembly spec. So instructions, operating procedure, procedures. So what I'm going to do now is take the data that's currently in the spec database for this finished assembly and run an ad hoc report on it using WWI. You'll see that it pulls together all the information from the database into a Word-like document that can be used for uh, distribution, it can be stored uh, against the specification. So you can see all the information from the property trees has now been pulled into the uh, Word document. This also includes uh, the images that were associated with the specification. Any Standard operating procedures, packaging instructions, palletizing instructions, and those related uh, instructional graphics. So now what I'm going to do is go into another system we have here. And I want to show how you can look at uh, packaging from an integrated product development standpoint. I'm going to look for a chicken nuggets product that we have in the system. Again, you're familiar with the search results return. So I'm going to select uh, a finished product. So a finished product would have uh, not only the packaging, but in this case, the recipe uh, and how you make the product. So you can see again, the associated identifiers with this. We have it associated with a bomb. It's got a product name. It's got a product number. Again, but high visibility in search. It's material assignment. So we have a five kilogram box. Uh, process route, you know, that's the uh, standard workflow in recipe development. So again, here we go. We're going to be looking at the properties. And I'm going to go into, uh, we're already in the finished good property tree. It just shows some of the general information around the specification, manufacturing info, estimated price, uh, integrate quality information, labeling information, including uh, marketing things like marketing claims, uh, how to store the product. So you can see that all the information around a product is now captured within the specification. Um, and here is the packaging information that we have. Includes our inheritance that we saw in the previous spec. Dimensions, palette dimension. Here's that's just an example of how uh, you can invert invert the axis again, just more of a usability feature within the spec database. Uh, text that goes along with the packaging instructions. So this is a a full product finished good specification, and you can see. Now the packaging information is associated with the actual ingredients. So this gives you an idea how you can, from a product development or a product data management standpoint, you can achieve that one version of the truth uh, for product related data here, tying in all aspects of product data. Product data. 
So I'll just uh, run a quick report as I did on the last spec uh, to give you an idea of what this one looks like. So here you can see that uh, we have our ingredient listing and other images imported, all the packaging data. So this is a full finished product specification document. So hopefully uh, this episode has given you an idea of, of the power of SAP with regard to uh, packaging specifications and then the integration of packaging specifications into your full product development processes.